Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm drawing this. For real, I'm drawing this this time. Okay, before I start the, the drawing, I just want to talk about two things. Number one, today is the first day of Inktober. I hope you're all participating. And what I've done is I've released an inking class on svslearn.com. This is a class um, that goes into pretty in-depth like detail about how I ink, uh, my techniques, my the way I use my hand, the way I hold the pen, the way I use my arm as well. Um, there's a bunch of different exercises, I want to say 10 or 11 different exercises that you can do to uh, get better at inking. Um, and I think probably the coolest part is it has a 30 page PDF with 10 or 11 different high resolution scanned drawings of mine. Both the pencil form and then the finished inks form that I want you to copy and trace and practice your inking on. Uh, there's also a version of the images with the, the inked layer like lightened so you can go over the lines and just figure out exactly how you might approach it and try to get the same line width and the same strokes and that more than anything I think can help you like really get up up to speed on your inking skills and, and level up if you're having a hard time like using the brush pen or using a crow quill or, or even just using a, a technical pen all these things um, I, I go over and I talk about uh, what to do and, and, and how to get the most out of each of these tools. I even have a list of the different pens that I use with links to where you can get them. So uh, check out the class, svslearn.com. I think you'll like it. If you like inking or you want to get better at inking, this is the class for you. Okay, number two, uh, I have a new book. I just got a stack of these. It comes out this month. Uh, it's a little snowplow illustrated by myself, written by Laura Kohler, and I'm really proud of this book. It was a lot of fun to draw, uh, a lot of hard work went into it, so check it out. I'll probably do a video later where I go through it and, and talk about my process of making this book, but for now just check out this book on Amazon. Link below. Okay, so uh, before I get started here, I just want to say that um, there's a guy upstairs uh, working on installing a new bookshelf in our kitchen, and he's doing some other work too. So it might get a little noisy, and I apologize for that if you hear some like working noises happening uh, upstairs. Um, okay, so last video I posted about Inktober, I just want to thank everybody for the phenomenal response that everybody gave me. Um, I, I everyone was so supportive and. And so, um, I don't know, excited for this, this project that I talked about, this personal project. And I just want to say right here and now that um, going along with that analogy of there's projects that you flirt with and then there's projects that you marry, uh, coming off the heels of that video and the support that I got and, and just looking at this project again, I actually proposed to the project and we are engaged. Uh, with plans to get married very soon. So that's where I'm at. And, you know, maybe I'll stop with this analogy, but but uh, I am committed to this project. I got such an adrenaline rush uh, after that that I, I, you know, in this adrenaline field, like, creative session, I sat down and made this really cool, like, teaser image for the project, which I'll post, uh, I'll post later in the month. Uh, but my plan right now is to do this project and to um, uh, get the funding that I need to do this project via Kickstarter. So the plan is to kickstart the project in a month from now. And what I want to do with uh, this YouTube channel is to bring you guys along in like the creation of how I set up a Kickstarter. This will be my third Kickstarter. Um, I'm no stranger to Kickstarter. Uh, my first Kickstarter made $85,000. My second one came in at $63,000. The first one was for a, a graphic novel like anthology of all my stories. The second one was just a collection of my art drawings, so sketches. Uh, I actually did a third kind of Kickstarter. It was an experiment for myself, like how do I do a Kickstarter outside of 
the Kickstarter platform. And so on my own website, I launched a, a quote unquote pre-order event. And it was just a way for people to um, pre-order a book and basically fund the production of Drawings 2, my second Drawings book. And it was a cool experiment and it made, it made uh, you know, it didn't make as much money as a Kickstarter does because it didn't have that um, viralness like laced into the fabric of of the platform but um, it was really cool to get see the support that I got from people and I want to say I shipped out uh, or pre-orders came in at 700 750 bucks so that was a good that was a good deal um, my first Kickstarter it was over 2,000 backers my second Kickstarter was 1600 backers so um, the scary thing about starting this Kickstarter and, and putting it out there is um, what a lot of times what you see is this, this trend to ask for the bare minimum amount. Uh, a lot of times just the amount to, for printing the book and, and then you kind of hope and pray and you risk that you'll get far exceeding that amount so that all of your expenses will be covered and you don't have to bring any of your own, own money to it. Um, and really... I see that as being like pretty irresponsible um, because I've seen projects and I've and I've talked to people where a project funded but it just barely funded and it wasn't quite enough money to pay for the production of the book you know for their for their basically their work they're putting into the book it covered the printing it covered the shipping but it didn't cover the hundreds of hours of time that they're needing to put into the project as well. So um, I'm still debating exactly how much money I'm going to ask for, but I know it's going to be, I want to print a thousand books. I want to ship a thousand books and I want to pay for uh, the production of the book. So my time that I'll put into the book, um, figure out a fair like page rate that's comparable to what I got at, at Marvel uh, with, with Rocket Raccoon and also to pay a colorist to work on it with me um, and hopefully uh, pay like an editor to just make sure everything's like professionally like put together for it. Uh, so that is the plan. That's where I'm going right now. And I want to, uh, like I said, I want to use this, this, um, this platform of YouTube to kind of bring you along in this journey towards getting this project created. So I want to talk about how I set up a Kickstarter, what I think about in, in building a Kickstarter, and um, hopefully funding a Kickstarter and, and delivering the, the project. Uh, and just kind of, yeah, just talking. I just, I'm excited to do this. Okay, uh, speaking of that last video and October, and today being October and me doing ink drawing, someone actually asked a question uh, that I'll address, address right here. Uh, his name's Frederick Christopher, and he says, "Hey Jake, I'm just really, uh, I'm just a really young artist from Asia, and I'm just wondering, do you get anything? Read money, royalty, a fee from this Inktober tread, trend? I'm sorry if this is not appropriate. Just the curiosity kills me. Inktober is so popular and a good habit. I think. Thanks. Uh, I don't think that's an inappropriate question." Um, you know, we're all artists. We're all trying to figure out like how do you make money doing this thing that you love. Um, uh, you know, being an artist as a profession is kind of ridiculous. Like art is something that a people don't need. Like you don't need it, but on the other hand, you do need it. You don't need it to survive. You don't. You need, you need clothing, shelter, and food. And people who go into business doing those things usually make a lot of money. The art thing can be a, um, you know, it can be a struggling way to, to, to make money. And so I think we're all kind of figuring out, like, how do you do this? Do you work for a big company, uh, uh, you know, making video games or animation or apps or things like that? Or do you strike out on your own and, like, try to find your voice and try to sell your work? Or do you, you know, you do everything in between or a mixture of both? Um, yeah, we're all trying to figure that out. And so I think any sort of questions on how do you make money doing this thing are completely appropriate. And it's something artists should be talking about and should be sharing with each other. In fact, my friend uh, Will Terry just uh, has been posting a, a series of videos on doing his first comic convention. 
and he talks about you know all the money's put into it and and how much you know it costs to get prints done and t-shirts made and how much his booths cost and then how much money he actually made at the convention whether or not he made his money back or not so i'd recommend checking out those videos if you're interested in that kind of stuff but the question at hand do i make any money from inktober and really the answer is no <laughs> inktober is free to do nobody has to pay money to to participate in inktober there's no revenue stream if anything um where i benefit from inktober outside of you know actually doing the the, the project and, and getting better at my at my craft um is it does draw a lot of attention to me and to my work uh people oftentimes talk about inktober and mention me as the creator of it and so I'll get more followers, you know, in the last day or two, I've gotten a thousand new Instagram followers just from people talking about Inktober. Um, and so that's good. And what happens is maybe down the line, I could, I could say to my followers, hey, I'm doing a project like a, <clears throat> a Kickstarter and hopefully a small percentage of those people uh, back the Kickstarter. So in a sense, that's a way that, that I get money from doing Inktober in a roundabout way, but there's no like direct pipeline of money coming into my bank account from, from Inktober. Um, a handful of pen companies have mailed pens out for me to try and, and maybe talk about them, uh, but none of them are paying me to be a spokesperson for, for their pen company. Um, I did make an Inktober book that collected some of my drawings and I sold a f few hundred copies of those. So that's kind of a way that, that I've made money from Inktober, but, but largely for the, the amount of work that I put into it and the amount of people that participate into it, it's basically just a free thing that happens on the internet, uh, and that everybody sort of participates in into and what we all get out of it is that we improve our craft and we get better at it now that said i'm not um you know i'm open to ideas about how to monetize inktober and, and it would be nice to have that subsidize uh some of my other projects but there's only so many hours in the day and there's really you have to make decisions of what you want to prioritize and what you want to work on in life and uh, do I want to make Inktober like my main thing? Um, I'm fine doing it for a month every year. I don't want it to be like, I just don't have time to do it, like to turn it into a business and to do it a thing. There are some ideas that I have for it, but uh, if it gets in the way of me creating the stories that I want to create and the books that I want to create, then um, I have a lot less interest in it. So that's where that stands. So starting a new project i've talked a lot about this project that i'm starting now and in a way this has been a project that i've been working off and on for a long time i feel like i've been working on it for 10 years but in a way i am starting new starting fresh with it now and so one of the things you have to deal with in starting a new project is confronting the fear and the uncertainty of the project now, what do I mean by fear and uncertainty? Well, first, let's talk about the reason that you take on a project. We, we as creators, create things for nourishment, and we get nourishment from several different ad avenues. There's nourishment, and, and this is oftentimes the best kind of nourishment. This is nourishment from the work itself. Okay, we create the thing, we've done it, you know, we've pulled it from our soul, more or less. Uh, we've put our blood, sweat, and tears in it, and we love it because it is a piece of us, and, and the work itself has, has given back. It's, I've made this thing, and I'm proud of it. Here it is. We also get nourishment from outside forces. We get nourishment from uh, the critical success of our project, what people say about it. And that's both from gate gatekeepers and just the common, uh, you know, uh, appreciators of art. These are, uh, you know, in this, this age of the internet where everything has a, 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 a comment or review attached to it, uh, you, can, you can get nourishment from what people say. And in the same way, you can get poisoned by what people say as well. And so that's another source of nourishment that we get from a thing that we've created. And third, there's a, a physical nourishment of uh, does this project make us money? Does this project, is it, a, is it a financial or economical success, right? 
And and in that way, it literally um, can nourish ourselves because usually you're spending your money on food, shelter, and and um, and and clothing, right? You know, covering covering our skin, feeding our bellies, and protecting ourselves from the elements. And so, in a way, those three things are are really what you set out to get from the things that you create. And so. The fears and the uncertainties come from creating this work is, will I get nourishment from this work? And those are the things you have to confront and you have to be okay with. And I think if you're taking on a project, you have to uh, take into account those three things. I think it's completely valid to have those, those fears and to have those concerns. But I think the perfect project also is one that where you do get the nourishment from those three things. And so deciding what to work on um, can, uh, I, I think, can get rid of those fears and can get rid of those uncertainties if you pick the right project. And so that's that's really one of the first things you have to figure out when you're starting a new project is what is this project going to be and, and how am I going to get this nourishment from it. Um, if you look at you know, I'm talking just about you as a creator, but if you look at even the uh, the pinnacle of of creation now, where you have, um, I'm going to use an animation company for an example. I'm going to use Pixar for an example. You have, I think they have a thousand employees. I, I, I don't know for sure, but there's a ton of people that work at Pixar. And you have all these people working together, creating these animated films that take millions of dollars to create. And this artwork that they're building is is beautiful. It's it's the pinnacle of what uh, mankind has been able to do with animation, right? Uh, and you know, since since we first started doing it a hundred years ago, and and what these guys are dealing with, the people who are making these films, they're still dealing with these fears. Does this thing that we're creating nourish us? Uh, is it satisfying our creativity from, from, from the inside? Is it um, going to be a critical success and is it going to make money? Those are the three things that even uh, you know, a studio like Pixar is worried about. Um, and what it comes down to is, is you can beef up or tone down those different levels on those three different things. Like say, okay, for this project, I don't need money. I just need creative satisfaction. And it'd be nice to, to you know, this, to hear my friends say that it was cool. Or for this project, I don't care if it's creative or not. I need the money right now. Uh, so I'm just going to take on this project for the money and this um, uh, creative nourishment that I'll get from it. I'll, I'll save that for another project. And so that's the balance you need to find. And I think that's how you deal with those, that fear and that uncertainty, is figuring out what you actually need from this project. For my personal project, this, this graphic novel that I'm going to kickstart, um, it's satisfying my creativity. I'm hoping that this Kickstarter is a success and it satisfies the nourishment that I need from, from, from the financial side. And I really do like it when people like my work. I do get nourishment from uh, from the critical side of things, what people are saying about it and what um, and what what people are getting from it. Um, I love opening up my inbox and seeing an email from someone that says, you know what, I, my son read Missile Mouse. He never read anything before this and Missile Mouse got him into reading. He now reads other books because of it. He loves your book. He loves Missile Mouse. We just want to say, say thank you. That gives me nourishment, and that gives me like energy to create more things. And so, from this project, I'm looking at like a balance between these three things. Uh, I've taken on other projects before, where it's like, you know, what? I'm just doing this for the money. I don't need the creative nourishment. Uh, um, and so, there's a balance that you need to find. And answering that question is really one of the first things you do when you're starting a new project. Um, the other thing is, is usually when you're starting a project, there's this punch of adrenaline. And the thing you need to realize is that adrenaline is not going to last throughout the project. I say ride that adrenaline as long as you can. As long as you're feeling it, man, create that stuff. Make that thing, right? Do it 
as best as you can, stay up late, pull all-nighters, and put everything into it. But do it with the knowledge that that adrenaline rush isn't going to last and that you're actually going to uh, stick with this project through the lows. Um, there's an even bigger, uh, I don't want to say it's a rush of adrenaline, but I, I want to say there's an, an even bigger emotional high uh, that's higher than that initial rush of adrenaline. And that is that high that you get from holding a finished object in your hand that you've created, whether it's a book, whether it's something you've sculpted, whether it's something you've written, um, uh, that high that you get is better than anything else, better than that from that first rush at the very beginning. And, and that is what you're striving for and that is what you're working for, is you wanna have that emotional high from holding that thing and saying, yes, I finished this thing. Because really that's all that matters. That's all that matters in, in anything in this world is people who can finish things. Uh, if you can't finish something, then nobody has interest in you or what you're doing. They want to see the finished product. They don't want to see the idea of the thing. Okay, and I think that's it. That's what I want to talk about in starting a new project is think about those three things, those three sources of nourishment and what you want to get out of this project. And, and number two, remember that that adrenaline rush is good, but the bigger source of satisfaction comes from finishing the thing. And I think that's it. I will talk to you guys next week. I'm going to talk more about how I'm going to launch this Kickstarter and what I'm going to do to like set up this Kickstarter. Uh, kind of share with you what you know the specifics of, of what I need to do to set up the page and, and how much money I need for everything and how to figure out how much money do you actually ask for. And so I'll, I'll talk about that stuff. Uh, if there's any questions you have about starting a project or, or, or what you want from me in this YouTube channel, um, I am definitely open to it. I read all the comments. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to reply to everyone. I wish I did, but I don't. Um, but I do appreciate it. All right. See you guys later and have a good day.